Disaster Planning and Response Art Rescue is a first responder for the world of art, providing planning, packing, evacuation, conservation, and storage for all your treasured possessions. So what we do here is I invite three Chicago or national celebs. That could be a scientist, an entrepreneur, an artist, a politician. And over food and wine and chocolate, the conversations flow. So it's a really fun, exciting event. But I think the best part is, is that it's interactive. So not only are we having great food tonight from Nomi chef Sean Farr, not only are we having Vos chocolate, and not only are we already, all of us, enjoying some city winery wine, but you guys have the same things. You're eating along with us, and you're a part of the conversation. So what you have here is duck confit riette with a little bit of country toast that's been spread with a French prune mustard. On top of it, you have a salad of watercress, shaved radish, little banyols vinegar, and some extra virgin olive oil. Okay. So just feel free to cut into the riette and spread it on the toast and make yourself a little sandwich. Ooh, okay, yeah, go to town. That. Thank you, Sean. What about you guys? What, what words of advice would you give to somebody trying to find their right footing? Well, I, I think what Lynn said is great. It's, it's, a, it's very much a, what, what Timeline was all about, which was uh, the company that I founded and helped, helped found with six friends. Uh, you know, we started with, this is a story we've told often, but we, we all threw in 50 bucks into a hat and started a theater company 17 years ago that um, was that was a part of our passion and, and part of what we all wanted to do. But we also realized though early on, and this is the other half of maybe what, what I realized, uh, was I went, to, I went to talk to a friend about this theater company and she said to me, well, why do you want to start a theater company? And, and I said, well, because we want to be on, we want to do plays and we want to be on stage and I'm, maybe I want to be famous and you know and and of course that's why I thought I wanted to start a theater company she said yeah but you're not really you're not really talking about what what you're going to bring and what you're going to do that's different mm -hmm. so what I what I learned back at a night at a bar on Glasscott's, I think, on Halstead Street. Oh, and gosh. She, we all right. remember Glasscott's. And she, she said to me, she goes, well, what, what's your passion? And I said, besides theater. And she said, uh, what, what else besides theater? And I said, I love antiques, and I love history, and I love things that in, that, that oh. tell you uh, what, 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 how something from the past, how it was used, and how it can be used today, and, and how it gets changed. And she said, that's your theater company. And uh, I just saw this friend up at the Guthrie. She's up at the Guthrie Theater now recently, and um, and it was it was a, a a lightning moment for me. And and um, that 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 little conversation at Glasscott's on on all said it it shaped um, not only a theater company, but not only my six friends, but then just uh, 17 years a, a company that's we're now a 1.5 million dollar a year operation from 350 dollar an operation all those years ago. And, yeah, and, and honestly, I think that mission, which is ultimately just knowing, having some, put, putting your ideas together and, and coming up with something original and sticking with it, and that's been a, that's always a tough thing, sticking with your guns and yes. going with a mission and letting that be the thing that kind of drives you. Mm -hmm. It's exciting, too. So, Which rock star had the worst body odor? It was one of the Stones, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a funny thing. I've... I've gotten to go backstage twice to hang out with the Stones, and this is what this is what they do. Uh, they, you know, it's a small group of four or five people in the music business, and they say, "Okay, you cannot talk to them, you cannot ask them any questions, you cannot touch them, tap them on the shoulder. They will come in, they will pose for a picture with you, and then they will leave." Yeah. So it was very hard to get a whiff of Keith Richards. Oh, too bad. Although, I, you know, I was trying, leaning. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Backstage smells so bad, mm. it's hard to pick out the odor of the rock stars. <laughs> so while I have lots of hissy fit stories about rock stars, oh. um, mm -hmm. uh, rock stars acting badly, smelling badly, I don't think they have anything on me. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's a draw then. It's a draw. We're going to say that it's a draw. Okay, well, I'm going to get to that question because Wait I want to hear about the history. Yes, right. You don't yes, want to yes, hear about Nora 
Indiana Jones going insane. We do, don't we? We sure do. We do. We do. We do. If, if you don't want to. Are you allowed to use the F word on this? Uh, Go. You don't want to hear about Elvis Costello cursing on me at me on stage at the Chicago Theater. I kind of do though. Well, what do you want to hear, the Nora Jones or the... I want to hear both of them. Yeah. Give, give us both, like, in short. Okay, I'll do my best. Yes. Here's the Nora Jones story. Okay. Ravinia, she's a big star. First album just came out. Ravinia is, if you've ever been there, it's packed beyond the gills. It's just jam-packed. So what you do when you make stage announcements, Ravinia, you come out and you mention a couple of upcoming XRT shows. There's some coming up. But you're also very NPR. You know, it's oh, different. Yes, if you're at Buddy yeah. Guy's Legends... Yeah. You're like, nine-time Grammy Award winner, are you ready? You know, it's that kind of thing. At Ravinia, it's more like, welcome to Ravinia. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I scare you? <laughs> so it's very low-key. And I thought I did what was a very nice, soft-spoken introduction where I said, you know, it's very crowded here. Make friends with your neighbors. You know, try to squinch in so people are not sitting on the walkway. And you know what, Ravinia, people like to talk when somebody's playing, even if it's somebody quiet like Nora Jones, right. and it drives you crazy. So I said, remember, we're all here to hear just one voice, and that's the voice of Nora Jones. She'll be out in five minutes. Okay. Walking off stage, I see her on the side of the stage, and I kind of catch my breath because she's arresting in her beauty. She is a beautiful mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, she looks great. As I get closer, she's going... <laughs> What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? You're getting them too excited. You're ruining the whole thing. And and I can't even form words. Because she's so I'm, ready. I, no, because I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Right. I'm getting them too excited? I don't think so. I think you'd have to give them hypodermic needles to get them too excited. <laughs> so at that moment, her manager turns to security at Ravinia. And these are people I've worked with for 18 years, on stage, off stage. Mm. And they say, I want him ejected right now. No! Oh. Wait a minute, Lynn Bramer got ejected from Ravinia? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, go gone! <laughs> and at the theater, the security people going, Lynn, we're sorry. I, mean, I, I said, I don't, I don't know what happened. I have, and to this day, no idea what happened. That's so but bizarre. I got them too excited going, Laura Jones will be out <laughs> I was insane on stage. That is clearly insane. Over the edge. What about Elvis Costello? Because I can't imagine him you know, swearing. The funny thing is I had dinner. Really? I can't imagine him losing he, his no, cool. I guess that's what I mean. He's kind of an angry guy. Oh. In fact, <laughs> if, if you want to fact check after dinner, all you have to do, it's great these days, is Google Chicago Sun-Times Lynn Bramer Elvis Costello. And the review comes out, and in the review, they couch it in uh, terms of Elvis Costello, still an angry young man, because he blew up at me on stage. On stage? Well. In front of a, an audience? It was date night with my wife. Oh, God. So oh, what no. happens is you go backstage, and you expect to get treated like crap, because you always go backstage, and the road manager goes, we don't know anything about this. We don't do MCs. You know, we don't have, we've never had a stage announcement. And you would say, well, I did it last year and the year before. But other than that, maybe never. <laughs> but it was all smooth running. The road uh -huh. manager said, oh, no problem. You, you know, use this. We'll give you a wireless mic, go out to the center. Say what you're going to say. Say it'll be out in 15 minutes. Fine, go out there, welcome the crowd, say Elvis is going to be out, say some nice things about him, walk up the stage, go sit down at the Chicago Theater, great night, I love Elvis Costello. Oh, small, yeah. He comes down, he plays one song, and then he turns to the audience, he says, I'd like to dedicate this song to the XRT DJ who lied to get on stage tonight. Oh, <laughs> like, oh what do you mean? Well, that's kind of a Kill. <laughs> Who was he talking about? Honey, I'm sure he's not talking about me. There must have been another XRT DJ who lied to get on stage. And he follows that by saying, I'm dedicating this next song to him. It's called You Little Fool. All in the article. So he does the show. He does the show. He goes off stage. He comes back for an encore. Uh, and he says... Uh, you know, before the show, a close friend of mine, I was playing some music from Patrick Bell of the uh, Chieftains, who 
passed away a couple of weeks ago. So uh, I was playing some of his music, but that fucker from XRT came out and ruined the whole fucking thing. I can't believe oh that. To this day, I play Elvis Costello on the radio all the time. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. As you well know, you need to separate the yeah. artist yes. from the art. Yes. Right. You yeah. don't yeah. want, that's why I did a whole lens bit on never go backstage, never meet these people. Yeah, I've heard you this listen before. to their music, yeah. enjoy yeah. the music. Yeah. And they don't want to meet DJs right. unless you're 19 and of a certain demographic. <laughs> they don't want to meet you. Yes, yes. So enjoy the music. Yes, I've heard this before. I, when I had an art gallery, which was my first business, the really serious collectors would always say that they didn't want to meet the artist because they didn't want their emotions to be influenced mm -hmm. and they didn't want to be swayed by that. So they wanted to just judge the work on the work and have that in their house. Yeah. By the way, th these two stories are just between you and me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, I have a CeeLo Green story. Oh, yes, okay, so I want to hear your... Okay, so does everybody know CeeLo Green? Do you like his music? Yes, I do, sure. I love his yeah. music. I think it's very hot and, you know, great dance music. Okay, so he was in town for the Macy's Glamorama, yes. which benefited the Ronald McDonald House charities, and it was a huge deal. I mean, he I drew remember. a crowd like crazy. The tickets sold out in a heartbeat. And so I was the chair for the event, and I was in charge of the little brand ambassador, the Ronald McDonald House brand ambassador. His name was Max Herrick, and he's now, thank goodness, he's eight years old. He survived a, a heart transplant at two. He's been in and out of surgeries for his whole life. He's been a, a constant at the Ronald McDonald House, sadly. But now he's cancer-free, and he's doing really, really well. <laughs> but at this point in time, yeah, he's fabulous. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a documentary about him and his family that I'm going to share with all of you soon, and it's going to be fabulous. But at this time, he was like six or seven years old, and he, uh, because of all these surgeries, his immune system was compromised, and so he had to wear this little mask, you know, yeah. especially in public. And he loved to dance, and he had his little hat on sideways, and so we're all at the VIP party afterwards, and he comes up to me, and he says, I would love to meet CeeLo Green. Do you think you can introduce me? And I said, well, of course I'll introduce you. And so he was uh, behind this velvet rope at this booth with no one in the booth but him. So I took little Max by the hand, and I walked back, and the security guard, you know, knew who I was, and so he opened the thing. I said, I'm sorry, would you mind just taking a picture with him? He says, no, I'm tired, I'm off duty, I don't have to take any pictures. I have never listened to his music. I have never liked this guy again. <laughs> I could oh not God. believe he would do something to this little kid. First of all, the mask. Obviously, he's sick. I will never forget that. And don't you ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I'm really surprised. That it's, it's is really unbelievable. Upsetting. Wow, that, take, that takes like a new low. It was a real low. Well, um, now that we've trashed on a bunch of people, <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. That was fun, though. <laughs> 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 this Smart girl has just won herself a gift certificate to Nomi Kitchen. Oh, Very nice hilarious. job. She got it in there first. Good for her. At Steph Eats Chicago, she wants to know, when was the moment you realized food cooking could be its own art form? Um, so, when the, I guess it starts when I started cooking. I started in a, a pizzeria in, in New London, Wisconsin, a town of 7,000. We had a Walmart. It was huge. Um, <laughs> And um, I never noticed that we were busy. I never noticed that I was um, in the weeds in service or that, you know, it, w it was crazy. But it just seemed like fun all the time. So it started out as something that just seemed like something I should do all the time. And then um, when, I, when I decided to drop out of music and get into food, I got my first job at, um, at a country club in Stevens Point. And um, the chef wanted me to do this salad. And I thought the salad looked kind of stupid. And uh, I kept running out to this this parking lot that had kale growing in it. And I, I kept running and clipping pieces of kale at every order. I never had the foresight to grab a couple orders of it. Um, and I don't know what the chef thought was wrong with me. So I'd run out to this thing and I'd be like, oh, this looks great. And then I'd run back out to the parking lot and I'd be like, oh, this looks great. So I think maybe that was the moment where I thought, like, it's kind of an art form. Um, I, would, I would say it's a bit more of a craft than an art form at this point with me. But like, uh, I, I think, yeah, running to that parking lot in Stevens Point was art. 